Hey guys, it's Ropsy, back with Paperless X, a channel dedicated to easing your digital transformation. In today's video, we're going to be going through everything you need to know about GoodNotes in 2023. If you're new to our channel, hello. Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know each time we release a new video. And if you're already subscribed, fantastic human. Welcome back. GoodNotes is a handwriting note-taking app that is available on the iPad, iPhone, and Mac. You can get it for a one-time purchase of $7.99, which is a universal purchase, and it will sync across all your devices that are using the same Apple ID, of course. The app currently has some beta versions for Android and Windows. Though we're not sure when exactly they will launch. This review focuses on the iPad version of the app. GoodNotes is free to try for new users, allowing you to create up to three free notebooks in the app. That's probably enough to help you decide if you like the app enough to pay for it. When creating a new notebook in GoodNotes, you can customize it from a lot of page templates. The app supports a lot of page sizes, which can either be portrait or landscape. Page colors are still limited. To three. But that doesn't matter because you can save custom templates to the app's templates library. And the templates that you can add are single pages. Notebooks in GoodNotes can have covers, but I prefer not having any. That way, I can see the contents of my notebooks right from the home page, which makes it easier to find notes. We can now get more page templates from the in-app shop. It feels like they're following in Notability's footsteps here, and we can't help but wonder how much they'll copy. Generally, we support developers adding shops to their apps. It's a decent source of revenue and it does save us from hunting digital stationery on Etsy, for example. However, there's not a lot to choose from for now, which is understandable because the shop is fairly new. GoodNotes has three types of pens, fountain, the ballpoint, and brush pens. I prefer the brush pen. It feels smoother than the fountain pen, which is very strange. Usually the fountain pen works for me. You can customize your pen tool to change its color and thickness. The toolbar can now accommodate 12 colors we couldn't be happier. Chances are you won't need that many colors to take notes, so this should be enough. Our pen thicknesses, however, are still limited to three, which is not enough. The good notes developers should consider adding a favorites toolbar to the app at least, one that can accommodate more than three pen tools. Fountain and brush pens both have a pressure sensitivity option. You also get tip sharpness for your fountain pen. In 2023, we feel handwriting experience and palm rejection are now an industry standard that we should probably stop mentioning. We would only be worried if the feature was missing in a note-taking app. Just to be clear, 
you won't have any problems in writing your notes in good notes. The highlighter goes behind your ink. And it does not dim your notes when layered. You can straighten it out to look neat. And we love that we can now have more colors for it on the toolbar. The eraser in GoodNotes can erase per stroke and per pixel. It has three fixed sizes. Which you probably don't need more than that, right? It can also erase the highlighter only. Auto deselect automatically switches back to the tool you were using before the eraser. The zoom tool zooms sections of your page. Though we feel zooming directly on the page is faster, a lot of note takers seem to like this. The app supports auto advance, but it is still not very accurate when moving down the page to new lines. So, you might have to manually adjust it for that, which is really unacceptable because, I mean, good notes should have this figured out by now. A margin marks the starting point for a zoom window to advance to the next line, but the margin itself is very small. The zoom tool in good notes is very basic. Its zoom range is also not that impressive because we've seen better. We hope to get a percentage display for our zoom tool. It would help to know how zoomed in we are on pages. You can draw regular. And irregular shapes. as well as curves. And arrows in good notes. The arrows are easiest to draw in the app because they are a two part drawing, which is the most natural way to draw arrows. You can adjust your shapes once you've drawn them, to change how they look. And the border color, which is not a lot of adjustment. Your shape in the app can either be auto-filled or not. with no option to switch between the two. And that's a bit limiting in 2023. We should be able to add or remove autofill with just a few taps. You also don't get any opacity options for your fill or shape. And the last limitation with your shapes is that your circular shapes still have one color for your border and autofill. 
Text boxes let you add typed notes in GoodNotes. You can format your text to make it bold. Italic. Underlined. Or strike out. GoodNotes supports custom fonts. And you can adjust your text color. Size. Alignment. And even line spacing. You can also customize your text boxes to add background and border colors. You can also determine how round your corners are, how thick do you want the borders to be, and the amount of padding you want around your text. Shadows are cool. We've not seen them in any note-taking app yet, and we love them. They just add that bit of character to your text boxes in the app. You can save one favorite text box style, so all the new text boxes you'll be creating will have that look. We hope in the future we'll be able to add more, or at least edit the presets in the app. Because the app does have a lot of presets, maybe we could just edit those instead of saving new ones. GoodNotes also packages your web links really well. This is the best way to add web links in a note-taking app. GoodNotes supports PNG images. The best images to add to your notes if you want them to look like you drew them in the app. You can crop your images as rectangles. or freehand. GoodNotes can resize, rotate, stretch, or shrink your images. We can do more with images, but this works. The app doesn't support GIFs though. Most people seem to care about those. Stickers feel a bit like images, though they're slightly different. The app has some basic free ones. You can buy some from the shop in the app. Or you can create your own from selecting items in your notes. Stickers are an excellent way to save elements you use often, like shapes and arrows. Saving some basic diagrams will help you build mind maps faster. The stickers remain editable, so you can modify them each time you use them. GoodNotes finally added audio recording, which syncs with your handwriting. And somehow with your text. The text sync feels like an audio stamp really, which is not very helpful. The tool is quite basic, which is sad to see because after all this time, we thought, you know, they would release a perfect audio recording tool. 
and when you tap your notes, you can't skip through the playback. We are happy to see audio recording in the app, but a bit disappointed from such a big developer. The lasso tool can selectively pick up different items, your handwriting, images, text boxes, or combination of items on your page. But it's unacceptable that GoodNotes still can't move selections across pages of the same notebook in 2023. We are getting tired of the workaround for this. We should be able to move things across pages in the same notebook. You can resize and rotate your selection. Though you can simultaneously resize and rotate without the option to do one at a time, it's not very difficult if you wanted to do one at a time. You can take a screenshot of your selection to share it out of the app. For your handwritten notes, you can also change their color. It would be cool if we could change the thickness and, you know, pen type and all that. For optical character recognition, OCR, good notes can convert your handwriting to text in 17 languages. You can edit any errors before sharing the conversion out of the app. Or copying it to paste it into the app. We are also tired of this two-step process for converting handwriting in GoodNotes. I probably feel that way because I have never appreciated the handwriting conversion feature in note-taking apps anyway. I tend to convert everything in a document or not convert anything at all. Um, still don't get this feature. OCR also searches through your handwriting, which is a use case we appreciate. However, we were never comfortable with indexing our pages to use this feature. We're skeptical to use it because, I mean, it's become such a normal thing to do, so we hardly question it now. But does indexing happen on the device or online? Does it mean that a copy of my notes could be stored somewhere else? And since we don't have any of these answers, we simply don't search our handwriting in most note-taking apps. We love that GoodNotes gives us the option to turn off indexing our notes, which disables the ability to search through your handwriting. If you don't have any issues with the indexing of your notes for handwriting search, handwriting search in GoodNotes is quite accurate. Let us know what you guys think about indexing your handwriting for searching in note-taking apps. Multiple instances can open the same notebook twice. And multitasking in GoodNotes is great because you can also open multiple tabs in each instance you open. Talk mode only switches the user interface in the app. GoodNotes is one of the few apps still using full stock mode in 2023. We hope that will change. Your pages and ink don't automatically switch when you toggle between light and dark mode. Scribble works for instant character recognition if you want to convert your handwriting to text in real time. It's faster than OCR and seems to make more sense in GoodNotes especially. You can add scans to your notes using the iPadOS scanning engine. We don't recommend using it though because it creates massive scans that take up too much storage on your iPad. You can view all the pages in your notebook. To add new pages. And we love how the app can easily copy page templates that you're already using in the app. 
You can also duplicate pages, move them to other notebooks, Selecting multiple pages lets you copy rotate or delete the selected pages. You can also bookmark your pages. For your outlines, the app can differentiate between the contents page that came with your PDF and the one you created yourself, which is very helpful. You can also change the scrolling direction for your pages. GoodNotes supports vertical and horizontal scrolling. It's unacceptable that GoodNotes still has such a primitive setup for navigating hyperlinks in PDFs. The developers should find a way for us to use hyperlinks without needing to deactivate all the tools in the app. I mean, smaller apps have figured this out already. Surely GoodNotes can. But yeah, it's really annoying that we have to deactivate all the tools in the app just to navigate hyperlinks and then come back to reactivate them. GoodNotes searches through your handwritten notes, PDF text, and scans. In your workspace, it organizes your search results into terms found in your notes and those found in your outline. So it's very easy for you to find what you're looking for in GoodNotes and that's what a search tool should do. On the home page, after searching through all the notes in the app, your results are organized into titles, written notes, PDFs, document outlines, and type notes. GoodNotes is one of the best search tools on the market. You can collaborate on your notes with others in GoodNotes. And this is the app's trump card. Anyone with your link can access the document in their GoodNotes app. There's still little control over permissions and how much people can do with your documents. However, the developers have got a lot of things right with this tool. Collaboration is in real time. And you can see how many people are online at any given time. People can comment to start conversations on the documents you're working on. Comments are very important when collaborating, so we love that the app actually has this. Notifications alert you when someone makes changes or comments on a document. We now look forward to having the option to turn those off though. For those of us that can't stand notifications, I never have notifications turned on for anything. I really don't like notifications and I would love to turn them off for good notes so I don't see them because they just annoy me. When you stop sharing your notes, others lose access to them, which is awesome. When you don't want to share your notes, you can simply present them, which hides your user interface so your audience can focus on what you're presenting. The laser pointer can either be a dot or a trail. Whatever you write disappears a few seconds when you lift off your Apple Pencil. If you want it for longer, just keep your Apple Pencil pressed on the screen. We love presentation mode because it means you don't have to create other notes in 
a different app to present them. You can do it right from your note-taking app. You can export your notes in several formats. Each has its advantages and disadvantages. In case you need to work on your notes from a different device or operating system, it helps that you're not trapped in the app. Good Notes supports infinite hierarchy levels of folders within folders. We don't like how the app organizes the folders though. It just feels like you are digging into a hole for something. After the third level, it's a lot of work to retrieve notes in GoodNotes with this setup. So we hope the developers can come up with a simpler way to navigate our folders. You can quickly access the documents you're sharing and your favorite documents and pages on the home page. Your documents can display either as thumbnails or lists that you can arrange using different criteria. It's exciting to know what developers are working on. However, it is very annoying when they publish experimental features as though they knew features in the app. A decent developer should have an option for users to opt in for experimental features, not shove them in our faces. It started with flashcards. We even forgot that they were an experiment. We relieved that the flashcards turned study sets are no longer an experiment. Three years later, although they have slightly improved how we create them, their space repetition is now inferior to what flashcards had. Well, they're still working on it. After experimenting on something for three years, we expect it to launch perfectly. That's not what we got with study sets, unfortunately. At least this experiment had a positive outcome, unlike the second experiment we got in GoodNotes. The GoodNotes community has been discontinued. Although it's a negative outcome, we are happy about it because we never liked the idea of a social media platform in a productivity app. It's counterproductive. However, the thing to note about experimental features is that they can just be discontinued anytime, and the GoodNotes community is evidence of that. Now they've added another experimental feature for body text. The app even has body text optimized pages where the text aligns with the line spacing of the page templates. Since they're experimenting so much, perhaps they should add an option for us to opt in for these experiments. Developers should enforce experimental features on users. And we feel Apple should probably have a policy on that. We could be wrong about this, but don't experimental features collect the usage data for developers to improve the experimental features? So is good notes collecting user data on these experiments? All unanswered questions that need answers. We love the collaboration feature in GoodNotes, but hate the growing number of experimental features in the app. They really need to stop forcing experimental features on us. Though GoodNotes is one of the best note-taking apps on the market, it is still ignoring some critical features that are fundamental for a decent digital note-taking experience. We need to be able to move items across pages. Handwriting conversion needs to be a one-step process and hyperlink navigation in the app needs to improve. Let us know what you think about GoodNotes in 2023. 
We hope you guys like this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Thank you, fantastic human, for watching. See you in the next video.